Hey folks, thanks for checking the video out. Today I want to take a look at guitar delays, how we can make these sound a little more natural, a little kind of smoother. The issue that I often have with guitar delays is that they're very, do, 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 you know, they're very obvious. I want to help them kind of blend in a little bit and there's two distinct ways that we can do this. I'm going to show you them now. So first off, just take a listen to this. I've called this uh, guitar sprang. This is like a, a rowl on a, on a guitar, like a bring. Have a little listen. Okay, it sounds cool, but to me it sounds a little too obvious. The delays sound a little too there. The whole reason that I like to put a delay on a guitar is to help it kind of blend in a little bit, help it sit back slightly, and that's just kind of doing the opposite for me. So there's two things we can do here. We're achieving essentially the same thing, but doing it in two different ways, one of which might work in one scenario, one of which might work in another. See which one works for you. So in my mixer, I've got my guitar sprang down here on a, a summing stack. Uh, if you want to take a look at how to use these summing and folder stacks, there's a link down in the description. What I really want to do, though, is take a look at these buses. So bus 13 and guitar verb, that's here. Bus 13 and guitar verb. So bus 13 is my tape delay, and then the guitar verb is obviously my guitar verb. Two different types of reverb on here, which we're going to go over now. First of all then, my initial way of kind of smoothing those delays is just to send my delay bus to my reverb bus. Take a listen to this. Sounds a little smoother. I'm still getting a bit of an immediate bap bap. So what you do is we've already got this delay bus going into the guitar reverb. So the delays are being reverberated, essentially. They're being smoothed off. But what we want to do is take the delay bus out of the main output. So it has no output. The delay is just going into the reverb. So the guitar is being sent to the delay. Delay isn't coming anywhere except for going into that reverb. So we're not getting any of the kind of dry delay, which is sort of a contradiction in terms, but we're not getting any of the actual delayed sound just dry out of the speakers. We're just sending it to the reverb and then it's coming out of the speakers. Take a listen to it now. Much smoother if you compare it to what it was before. So let's just put this back into the main output. This is how it was before. Then if we put it into the guitar reverb bus and make it so it's not coming up speakers. Load smoother. I think that's such a unique way of making something sit back and it's kind of a common thing that everything should go to a bus, you know, everything should come out of speakers, but sometimes we're using something just to affect another piece of audio. Here, we don't actually want to hear that dry delay, contradiction in terms again, come out of the speakers. We just want to have it go and feed that reverb bus, which is then coming out of the speakers. So that's the first way. It's a nice, simple way of setting up a couple of buses so that you've got uh, the delay signal just going into the reverb. But you can also do this with just one plugin. So if we take a look at this second reverb, the first one was um, Verb Suite Classics. That's from Slate Digital. Great reverb. But I want to go to another great reverb. This is Neoverb from Isotope. Now what we can do here is over on the pre-delay section, we can have it so that we can set a certain millisecond value, but we can also sync it to the tempo of the track. And that's essentially what I'm doing on the delay. I'm creating a delay that's on a quarter note, and then it's just doing one delay. So I'm not doing a load of delays, blah, 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 I'm just doing one. It's like a slapback, like a slow slapback. That's essentially what we can do here. We can time the pre-delay so it's a quarter note, so that the delay there is not actually happening until a quarter note after the original sound. Just take a listen to this one now. This is with the original delay track muted, so we're not getting any of that. The delay is all coming from this pre-delay in the reverb. Thank you. 
So there's a couple of benefits doing it this way. When the actual initial guitar sounds in the original way of doing things, then it's getting reverberated straight away, and then that delay is coming in, and we're reverberating that delay as well. If we're adding the pre-delay on a reverb bus, then there's no actual reverb happening to the initial guitar sound. The reverb isn't actually happening until a quarter note after the original sound. So in that quarter note, within that quarter note, we're not actually getting any reverb at all. It's waiting a quarter note until it actually sounds. So two different ways of doing things there. Both achieve a nice kind of smooth delayed sound, but the first way where we're just using a delay send and then into a reverb send, we're getting reverb all the time. It's gonna be reverberating straight away on that first sound. But if we're doing it on a pre-delay way, the way we're doing it in the reverb here, then we're getting a nice clean sound on the original guitar, and then the reverberated sound is not coming in until a quarter note afterwards. Have a listen to those two and see which one you like. So two different ways of achieving a very similar thing but they're gonna have two different sounds. Arguably with the second one, the way we're using Neoverb, you can add some more reverb and it's not going to wash out the original guitar sound. So if you're going for like some really big reverbs on that delay sound, then you can be much more aggressive with those reverbs. You can give it a much bigger reverb and still be able to hear the original guitar. It's not gonna wash it out as much. Doing it the original way, where we're going through a delay bus and then into the reverb, the original guitar sound is going to be reverberated, so adding too much reverb is perhaps gonna wash out that guitar. Two different ways of doing it. See which one works for you, and let me know in the comments. I'll see you again soon. Take care.